Um, so Craig. Craig, Craig Robert, <laughs> George. So Craig. Yes, Sean. <laughs> See, this is what happens yes. when you have like a bunch of names. People are Chico. calling you by all of them, right? Chico it's the man. so great to be here on VoiceOver oh, Buzzer see Monthly. Here. VoiceOver yeah. Buzzer Monthly. Buzzer Monthly. With Sean and Sarah. Oh, Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. All right, you guys, we have an awesome actor with us. You love him. You've been waiting. He's finally here. You know him from awesome shows like Unikitty, Avengers Assemble, video games, Assassin's Creed, and of course, is Sonic the Hedgehog. He is Roger Craig Smith, and we are getting buzzed. Oh, hi. hi. So I wasn't tripped. That was like a, it was, it was like, you guys are doing like a little promo. And I'm like, okay, and we're clear? Okay. Yeah, cool. no, this is. A, did sorry. you look amused we, and interested? I, I, I did. I wasn't sure. Chuck and I were sharing a couple moments. Oh, so I I thought, this no, is I, why. I why really can't I quit because, you? Okay. Because obviously you watched uh, some episodes before you, yes. you came here. Yeah. And, we and mixed Roger's it up. Like, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Don't you guys do a little intro, intro. first? And then I come in and do our thing. I go, Very no, Roger. Yeah. We changed our format a little bit. Yeah. In fact, the Last episode yes. that you guys saw before these, yes. we didn't say at the end of this episode, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. buzz. And 3,000 of you emailed us saying, hey, what, what happened? happened to, you always have time for a little buzz. So we're going to put it back in yeah. later on. You Don't mean to tell me that the internet was pointing out something to you? It's crazy. Like in a negative isn't it, way? Isn't like, it interesting that's not how the internet I know. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, weird. usually it's just, hey, great job, love everything you do. Totally keep supportive, on, not, nah, you missed a button on your shirt, or uh, why are you doing that with your face? You they don't do that, not in my world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, right. You forgot your tagline. I know, right? Man, we're such huge fans of yours. Oh, stop uh, it. And, and, and last yes. time we saw you at uh, Flapper's, yes. Flappers. Uh, doing some yes. comedy. Oy. Resurrecting his stand-up. It's, it's rare it was good. when you <laughs> see somebody on a comedy stage that really, really makes you laugh out loud, yes. unless they're like a professional comedian. You were talking about Carlos and Gray, the other two oh, well, no, voice they actors were, they who were, were there really, too. Really great too, uh. but but for us, like we you know, oh hey, I'm gonna do some stand up. We're like, Ugh. okay, uh -huh. right? But you are so freaking funny. I mean, Carlos and Gray are funny he is too. Phenomenal. But you were really yeah. great, and the reason why mm -hmm. is because you were a professional comedian. Yes. Yeah, so Take us back, oh Roger. boy, that was that was what was really funny about doing this 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 little thing with. Uh, Carlos Alas Rocky and Greg Griffin, who were who, yeah. who were nice enough to say, "Hey, we'd like you to do this thing with us," mm -hmm. and and originally I thought it was going to be like a night of a bunch of comedian or, or a bunch of voice actors who had also done comedy in their past. Right. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, we're talking like five minutes." I'm like, "I could write a five minute, you know, bit <laughs> in no time. We'll be fine." And then again, this conference call with Carlos and Gray, and they're like, "Yeah." So I was thinking, like, you know, everybody could do like just like twenty a piece, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I was thinking more like I'd like." Maybe just be the opening act, yeah. you know, kind of thing, and uh, and so it ended up. I wrote ten minutes and and went back. But yes, I got my start in stand up comedy, and literally the story of how I got involved in voiceover was doing stand up comedy because I would do characters tell, and tell voices. Tell us about it. How, so you, how do, you got started? The, the the absolute beginning origins were I finally got out of high school. I was directionless. I had no clue what I was going to do mm -hmm. in life. Um, and but I knew that I, I was a theater arts kid and all that kind of stuff. And I'd done children's musical theater and stuff growing up. And I thought, well, this is this. Is, I think that's where I'm going to go. But how do you get started, kind of thing? And I was getting to an age where a couple of buddies were like, "Man, you should try stand up. Like, cause you're funny and you, this is what you should try stand up." And I thought, I'm finally outside of high school and I could maybe try this. So looked up some open mic stuff, that kind of thing. Started learning the process of you know how do you get, get involved, this kind of thing. And then I thought, all right, I'm, I'll learn. How like, do you? How do you be? How, <laughs> how do you do And Google that? was barely a thing. Oh, and yes. It's like Alta Vista, <laughs> your way through this. And uh, and so I, I put together a very loose bit of material and then called up my high school theater arts instructor and said I want to mm -hmm. go back and I want to have you after school like evaluate what I'm about to do. And because uh, she was one of the people who was also encouraging, Jan Laurie, my That's my smart, uh, by the love way. It. it was neat. So I called her up and the, you know, it was after school and the, the theater was open and I, I I did my thing and. We got done, and she's sitting there like this, and she goes, okay, all right. You want me to be nice, or you want me to tell you what I think? And I was like, well, tell me what you think, because that's what I'm here. And she goes, where are your characters? Where are your voices? She's like, you were like my little, like, she always said, you're my little Robin Williams. She's like, you're my little guy who just like goes into these weird little things, yeah. and, and that's what you do. And she goes, and, and we derive so much joy as an audience from watching you do that. Like, go do that. 
Yeah. And I, she was like, instead of just being observational, make characters and voices. And, and then the audience can laugh at you along with you because we know that you, Roger, are becoming this character to sort of lampoon it. Exactly. Yeah. And I went, okay, good advice. So I started doing characters and voices in my act. Started doing more and more stand-up. Um, you develop like, you know, your industry seven or eight minute set kind of thing. And then I started emceeing and then I started middling and doing stuff like that. And I was traveling and that kind of thing. But all along, I was just still doing these characters and voices. And all along, as I progressed, I heard more and more people in the business saying, who represents you for voiceover? Mm. Because you MC like a charity event, you do your, your right. blah, 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 stand-up kind at of thing. At that point, you could go Google voiceover. <laughs> there, and that's what I did at that ah, point. Like yay. quite literally. So it became finally, we, there were 10 of us that were performing at the Improv in Irvine for the Aspen Comedy Festival. So we were selected to try out in front of a live audience. Yeah. We perform, they kick the audience out. We go up and right, sit back on stage and the woman that was there to evaluate us goes one by one in front of our peers and says, mm. you, uh, don't do props, you're not a prop comic <laughs> and your outfit is like, is juxtaposed, it's, it's just not flowing, you know, goes to the next person, love your voice in terms of like your comedic sensibility, but your delivery is, is really stilted and you know, work on that. Goes down the line, I was like eighth or ninth and she comes to me and she goes, who represents you for voiceover? And I went, uh, n n nobody and she goes, huh, huh, I think you'd be really great at it. And then moved on. Didn't say anything about my stand-up. Didn't say anything about. And I, and I literally that night went, okay, I'm barking up the wrong tree here. Oh my god! I'm like, I, it wasn't like, hey, I know, great, right? I can't wait to see more right. of your comedy. Yeah, yeah. So I went home and googled, and I and I literally like googled voiceover training, all that kind of stuff. Found some places, and and then it, like I put together the world's worst voiceover living, demo. Were you living here in Los Angeles? Orange County. I was based oh, yeah. down in Orange County. Yeah. yeah. So I just moved up to LA back in 2012 after making the commute for about seven years and mm. going nuts. Yeah, well. yeah. Um, but no, so that was literally how the start happened. I, I, I just, That's I went home, so Googled good, yeah. voiceover training, and then I took some classes, that kind of thing. Right. Pounded the pavement in my local area for about three or four years, kind of just developing your own little business. Mm. And uh, So you made your own demo? Absolutely, and a okay. slimline jewel case, which was all wrong, oh! and I put on a suit and tie, <laughs> yeah. nice. and I map quested, because there were no smartphones, right. like that. Oh, I yeah. map quested directions to 11 different places that I found that were like, Wedding video places and like trying to find post production in L in Orange County was mm -hmm. a little rare. Yeah, and so I went. I found these these post production places, and I was just like, I'm either gonna irritate some people or I'm gonna leave a mark. But yeah. I, I went and knocked on doors like in the middle of the day. Wow. Knew I was overdressed, but I was trying to like be memorable. Yeah. And had about three out of the eleven call me back. So Roger, why don't you take us through like maybe your first gig ever? Okay. In voiceover, and then maybe your first like huge gig. Okay. This is a great story because there'll, there'll be names involved that you know. Oh, so the, good. The, the, the first gig that I ever did was a training video for nurses who specialize in dialysis. <laughs> and it was a little thing at a, at a little place called the Creative Media Recording down in Cyprus. And they brought me in and I did like 11 different little voices and characters and stuff. And the way they would do this is they would, they would take, I'm sure legally, take uh, footage from films and put them on these training videos and then they would like just change the voices mm. to make it a little more fun for the nurses and that kind of thing because it was exactly. pretty it's pretty drab stuff you know yeah. and, and, and so they would do like yoda and you know or like morgan <laughs> freeman or all these different things right and they just needed people who could like do different characters and i remember leaving there and i think i got like 75 bucks for it right nice. but i remember just kind of leaving going that only took like 30 minutes I made seventy-five dollars. Like, this is amazing. Granted, it's like non-union, so you wait six months for the pay, you know, right. check to arrive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like by the time you factor all that out. <laughs> but that was like, that was how I was getting started. So that was the very first sort of legit paid mm -hmm. gig. Was a training video for a nice. dialysis, a nurse's dialysis. And machine. you were happy. I was you thrilled because I went in and did what yeah. we love doing. It, yes. was like, it was like a whole bunch of people saying, like, what do you want me to do? Like, okay, uh, I don't know. Let me try that. You know, they must yeah, have yeah, yeah, loved yeah. you. They must have been like, oh, I wish it would take longer. Because uh, it was funny. That's it was spiced so up their cool, day. Yeah. It was okay, good so to be now, discovered in that way. What about yeah. your, the big gig? The one you just went like, The one you were like, this the might work what? out for me. Well, so the big, well, I... There's been, I have been so, like, knock on glass. You have, man. Yes. I've been Guess so way, fortunate. The, underneath this underneath is, is, wood. is wood. There Good. you go. Okay, the, you know, the metal plate <laughs> in my head. Uh, no, I have been so unbelievably fortunate, too. Like, when people say, like, oh, what's another character you'd love to play? And I'm like, man, I, I, mm. I've already I've done it. Like, like, more than I could have ever imagined. But the big taft Hartley gig for me, like, where, yeah. where I got to join the union. That's cool. Um, was my agent calling me up and saying, hey, we, we, it was a Chicken Little TV series that was shelved, never, never saw the light of day. Yep. But I booked the voice match uh, for Steve Zahn. Mm -hmm. And so at, at the time I didn't know but they, um, that they were gonna do this little animated series kind of thing. 
We ended up doing a video game, and I was one of the only voice matches. I think they got the original cast, but Steve's, I guess Steve wasn't available. You were probably like, voice match? Yeah, I was like, what is that? Yeah, that's a thing, huh? And so voice matching the character of Runt from Chicken Little, the big, the big mm-hmm. pig. Um, and, uh, and so I show up, and I, I had an old early iPod that I had like a microphone attachment to, so I would record all my auditions. And I'm sitting in the waiting room at LA Studios, and I'm nervous, and I'm not talking to anybody. Right. I'm just quiet, I'm taking headphones in, I'm like listening to my audition over and over and over and over and over again. Trying to make sure I can, you know, I'm gonna nail this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do such a good job. First take. And Charlie Adler was our director. Oh, no. oh yes. Charlie Adler, Tara good. Strong, Maurice Lamarche, and I apologize. I forget there was a gentleman that was doing uh, Zach. Uh, is it Zach Braff? Yeah. Zach Braff is he? He was the voice of uh, of Chicken from Chicken Little, right? From I, I think from so. From Scrubs. From Scrubs. Yeah. yeah. From Scrubs. It was Zach yeah. Braff. And there was a gentleman, I believe, who was like a Muppeteer who was, who was doing the role of what Zach would have been. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had Tara Strong, Maurice LaMarche, and Charlie Adler oh as gosh. our director, as, which, which Charlie is one of the biggest personalities you could ever hope to be around. So but for incredible. like me, little, like, you know, yes. like, oh boy, what do I do kind of thing. Little dialysis, this, man. Right, exactly. Well, From his... dialysis to Charlie Adler, right? Which should be like a hashtag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, so all of a sudden, in walks Charlie, and it was just boom, hello, everybody. About, and he was he was digging into me and like you know like making fun of me and stuff and it was great because I, yeah. I he would say all right everybody we're gonna start at 34 I'm turning to page 34 ah line 34 Sweet. and all of a sudden all the actors are going and then it gets quiet <laughs> and everybody's heads start turning to me and I'm like it's supposed to be me me and I'm like I don't see a page 34 <laughs> and she just starts cracking and I just give me a hard time about all that kind of stuff I love but it. it was it was I know Maurice LaMarche from a Rodney Dangerfield um, comedy tape from the 80s that my brother and I yeah. watched on VHS mm. that we like like ruined. We watched it so many times. Yeah. And Maurice was an impressionist, and, and a, yeah. not an impersonator, but an impressionist. Yeah. And so to, to this very day, whenever I hear the name Maurice LaMarche, I always think, meet Maurice LaMarche. And he did like a Rod Serling kind of a thing where it oh, was yeah. like, mm-hmm. he was doing the Twilight Zone. And, and, and so all of a sudden I'm in the room, yes, with, uh, <laughs> with the brain, <laughs> but I'm like with dude, you're Maurice Lamarche from that Rodney, you know Rodney yeah, Dangerfield yeah, comedy yeah. special, young comedians comedy yeah. special kind of thing. So it was just to have to talk to talk about trial by fire, to have Charlie as my first director, oh, yes, and to hear the things that they would say to each other, Tara and Charlie back and forth. Every and, other gig, yeah, yeah. Yeah. point was well, like, listen, I, will, oh, yeah. I so you it's don't, earmuffs. so you yeah. don't feel badly. The first time I ever read to picture, uh-huh. I didn't know that's what I was doing, and I thought they just brought a TV in because it was going to be a long session, so oh, I could yeah. watch yeah, TV. Yeah, chill, yeah. And I started looking and going. Oh, these images are is me- uh, oh, and then yeah. they're like the beeps, and I'm like, uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but I had no idea. So like, you know, mm-hmm. thinking on your feet is a good thing. There's no fourth beep. You know, it's like it's yeah. the yeah. fourth imaginary. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought it was for me to watch TV, so I wouldn't get bored. Yeah. yeah. Hello. To this day, just to give people a hard time, if I ever walk in, like I, I recently, I recently had an engineer. It was one of the funnier things. I can't remember where it was on a on a Sennheiser 416, which is a long shotgun mic. Yeah. Of course. They were using for a very close up. It was very strange. Yeah. But they were having some issues with something, some plosives or something like that. <laughs> and the engineer comes in, and he's making some, and he goes, bro, it's like, it's like right here, just do this. And I was like, oh, okay, I do that. <laughs> That's like 15 years of doing this. I knew it, like, it was too funny. You're like, diver down, day, I'll, I'll, If down. I'm working at a new studio, I'll yeah. be like, okay, so I go, this is the thing? You know, like, right. do I, okay, I talk into this now? And I hold, I hold the microphone, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where's the camera? <laughs> is there tape for me to, you know, is there a mark that I'm supposed Adorable. to Adorable. Oh, man. It was fun, but I mean, yeah. That to me, I still think of that to this very day. And for yeah. years, whenever I saw Tara, I would just like, you know, that yeah. you were like my very, very first gig, and so I great. was just like sitting there, like not wanting to screw up. That's all. Well, I and now do. there are people that are going into a session and saying, "Oh my gosh, there's Roger Craig's Yeah. So it's, it's cool. It's the great. You it's get the great. to, hey, which is very strange. Yeah. What do you think have been some of the biggest? contributors to your success? Because I mean, obviously you're a talented guy, but is there anything along the way that you, you, you felt really, you know, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have had that. I don't know, Fred Tatasho and I talk about this all the time, because I, I, I don't know. I, like I say, I consider myself very fortunate and, and it's, hard, it's hard to say that I'm not doing something correctly, but that's, that's so unique to every individual. It mm-hmm. is. And it's like when people ask, like, you know, what's your advice for, you know, da, 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 and I say, like, uh, I used to try to say, like, oh, go to this website, go read these books, go do this right. kind of thing, right? Um, but the reality is there's no, like, one line to stand in or one book to read mm-hmm. or that kind of thing. So lately I've been responding to people and saying, like, well, um, you're never going to have my career. And I wait to see their response. 
Because then I follow it up and say like, and I'm never going to have yours. Yeah. Like it's totally up to you to figure that out. So Fred and I talk about this all the time where we say like, is it weird that we have this healthy balance between, gosh, I hope they don't find out that I don't know what I'm doing. And also, I got this. It's mm-hmm. like that pendulum swing between narcissism and ego and yeah. and utter fear and yeah. you know and knowing that it's like you know they're, they're gonna find out that you're yeah. you're, a, you're a failure and you don't know what you're doing that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Not. but it's like the that's co- the thing you guys are so funny when yeah. it comes to that because no but you have a sense of, of humility which is lovely which is why people want to have you around but it's like the confidence and insecurity they but kind maybe of that's have what it is i yeah. don't know maybe yeah. it's like but i'm still hungry for the next one know, like you know what that's what makes you guys so freaking i always say this that you know the people in the voiceover industry are so freaking cool because you guys are really like, I mean, beyond talented, but you're so down to earth Mm -hmm. because you always manage to carry around that little piece of fear with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which is really really cool. Yeah. And and the gratitude. Not the fear part. for sure. Just the cool part. No, no, but it is, but it does fuel, I think, a lot of people. I think, you know, professional athletes are striving for the next because they don't want to fail or whatever it might be. There might, and I'm not equating myself to a professional athlete (laughs) the least bit, but no, I think Fred and I, we we laugh about all the time going like, it's kind of funny because we, you have to have this balance of like, yeah, you, you you can you can you can sort of squash the fear down enough when it starts rolling, and and get into this zone where you start saying like, okay, you got this, you can do this, or like just hey, throw it against the wall and see what they're mm-hmm. gonna, you know, that's your yeah. job, that kind of thing. But but riding that 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 sort of balance all the time, because if it swings too far to one side, you it, yep. then then bad things happen. Totally, yeah. you either don't appreciate it or you start it to like become. And I've had like I've had my moment in 2013. I started to feel a little egotistical. And really? I, yeah, and I, you and started I, and drinking I, your own Kool Aid, did, did you? A, a very little yeah. bit, and it yeah. was and it was it was dipping my toes into, into some waters of like a, a a vibe that I shouldn't have been going for. Mm-hmm. So 2013 was uh, arguably one of the the biggest years in terms of my career at that uh, you know at that point. Right. Like three high profile things were coming out. I had Batman: Arkham Origins was releasing. Uh, Marvel's Avengers Assem- uh, Assemble was debuting on Disney XD mm. and Planes. So they're um, all huge. Yeah. They're all huge projects. Yeah. Uh, projects. I had also kind Did of... Did you say projects? Projects, yes. Projects. We can get the Canadian out yeah, there. Yeah, sorry about that. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sorry, Canadian. Yeah, sorry, I know Bo- you're not. That's fine. And sorry to all the Canadians the pro- for that. The boot processes. Thing. Yes. yes. The processes. I love you. <laughs> Aluminium. So, so what happened to you? So you know what it was? <laughs> His jobs think, ruined you. I think I just like... I, I think I was getting... I was... Uh, it's ironic. I was sort of overworked. And I, at that time, like I had just made a move, a whole bunch of life events were happening to me at the time, like in 2012. And then all of a sudden, I think I was just letting stuff kind of get to me. And I started to feel like, well, you know what? There's a better way to do this. You know, and it's like, and I'm gonna share that with folks. Mm. And, and so there, were, there, was, there was one incident in particular involving a, a, a good friend of mine. And, and to this day, like I still bring it up and I apologized and talked about that and we've, we've We've chatted about it, but it was it was an interesting thing to kind of go. Oh yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That's not a. That's just not a healthy outlook, and it doesn't create. You're not you're not fixing anything. Mm. You're not solving anything. You're certainly not reinventing the wheel here. And it's like yeah. think about how many actors or people or celebrities or anybody who's come along in this business who's who's been like you know I'm gonna get this down and do it the way I think yeah. it should be done. Kind yeah. of, and we don't hear from them. And it's like no, like I was losing. The pendulum was swinging too far to one side, mm-hmm. probably because of fear. Right. Because of the idea that this this might slow down, this yeah, might this be has different, to last. right? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, and you can't do that. It's yeah. like it's a, it's an addiction at that point. It's unhealthy. Yeah. And to think that it's ever gonna that it's always just gonna be constantly on this you know the, the, uh, this ascension. It's like no. Yeah. And then because I I think back to times when it was like I wasn't even close to the number of gigs that I had achieved at that time. But I remember thinking, man, you know, not three or four years ago, I was kind of happy, I think. Yeah. I was happy to, to book a gig. I can remember living in my little crappy one bedroom or a little studio apartment down in uh, the circle at Orange and I'd book like a video game role and I'd be like, dude, I made my rent. You know, yes. like, I yes. did day and yeah. it was like, time to kick back and play some video games yeah. and call some friends. I can and eat like, hot food for dinner. Exactly, <laughs> I'm gonna go eat, you know, like like eat out of that. Would that be great, who does that? Not yeah. just Top Ramen. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so, it was funny to kind of think all of a sudden now you're you're in a position where you're, you think you're thriving, but you're so you're sort of spread so thin, and I was losing losing track of like like gratitude, mm-hmm. and, right. and, and, yeah. I, and I and it spilled over in a, in a session at one point, and it's the only time that it's ever happened, and I just remember thinking, oh, that was ugly, and I, to this day I'm still sort of like, Ugh, 
sort of horrifically embarrassed by it, and it wasn't yeah. really all that bad or anything like that. It right. was just me getting frustrated in, in, in something that was being asked and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And everybody was under a tremendous amount of stress on this particular yeah. project. And, but good um, on you for realizing it, though. Because I think yeah, some yeah, people yeah. kind of go, oh, it must be them or the situation, as opposed to really saying, wow, let me hold the mirror up for yeah. a second and say maybe I'm the one that needs to make, I'm the common denominator in these situations. We almost always are. I read yeah. some quote online, I wish I could attribute it to somebody, but it was, man, it was, it was better to know your own mind than to, uh, what is it, than to define your reality. Mm. And I thought that was interesting because it's like, yeah, look inward instead of looking around and going, well, you know what it is? It's that the industry's not ready for me. Or right. you know, it's like, no, maybe right. you need to yeah, this or maybe exactly. you need to that or you are a contributing factor to some yeah. element of this right. and look there right. instead of trying to define totally. the reality of the yeah. situation. Yeah. yeah, so let me ask you, man, now yeah. that you know better, yeah. right, and uh, you, you, you were able to experience that, yeah. mm -hmm. How do you how do you stay balanced now? How do you keep yourself in line and, and, and motivated and on the right track and and, and 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 prepare yourself for overcoming some of the harder times? What's the mindset? So I try to I try to feed my soul as often as possible. So I've mm. I've since learned in the last few years just how important it is for me to get out and do the things that, that bring me joy personally. Because yes, this industry, it is fulfilling in one sense mm -hmm. and the acquisition of the work is the work and I love that I love the challenge of like oh man they're gonna get 350 auditions of, of, of all these dudes doing this one choice yeah and I want to try to tweak it a little bit I'm gonna try to do something different maybe I can book it by doing this or you know like that that keeps me kind of fired up the challenge yeah. and that sort of thing but taking care of myself I've, I've, I've understood the value in that because I, I've had a horrifically negative inner monologue for many many decades mm -hmm. and coming to terms with that and understanding that that doesn't really work, that's that pendulum kind of thing, kind yeah. of playing against you. And so I try to go do, like get out and... Uh, oh, is uh, your, your astrophotography? I think you said, yeah, so the hobby. And your nightscape, you guys, you have to go to Roger Craig Smith's Instagram and Twitter. Yes. Uh, it is literally, I how many times you What's get, it at, what's your Twitter at, handle? Oh, oh, it's just at Roger Craig Smith yeah. for, both, twi uh, for both Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, There's been several cool times when I'm, you know, like doing my thing and, I'm, and I'll go like, <gasps> Oh, ooh, and he's like, and he's like, are you looking at Beth Stern's foster kittens? I'm like, no, I did that already. <laughs> I did that already, but I'm like, oh my God, look at this. I mean, it is so, I mean, it is so yeah, otherworldly. But I think that's like, I don't know why that's, that's been the thing, it. like finding something outside of this, yeah. because like, you can get mired in, in the what's next, what's next, and, yeah. and you will begin to get that little bit of like, I gotta keep this going, I gotta keep it going. And and in the minute you feel like oh I haven't I, I didn't go to Comic Con this year nobody asked me to, it's like oh no it's like no you're fine it yeah. it, it doesn't just yeah. keep going I, yeah. I mean it's when like, you're oh, out Mark in Utah <laughs> yeah, exactly and exactly. Right. exactly he what? doesn't even want it in the Cubs who, who, you know by it's by like, the way, oh, God what is this like talking about voice actors one of the, one of the most, yes. most nicest most down to earth guys and it's yeah. like, but no, I think. Like, but like, if you're you're in the middle of Utah, like, because I used to race sailboats, and like, you're out in the oh middle boy. of the ocean, right? And you just feel like this little tiny speck, yeah. right? Yeah. So like, for you, that must feed your soul in a way that nothing else does. It does, does. And we don't have problems, like, like really and truly, like, like I have to remind myself of that, uh, it, which sounds like I have to remind myself. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's so difficult. To, so you know, fabulous. It's, it's like get off my gold toilet and. <laughs> you know, no. I, uh, but but I do have to remind myself, like the things that we consider to be problems, especially even in LA, mm. by comparison to like other parts of the world or just existence in general, like yeah. really oh and gosh. truly, these are not problems. Yeah. And, it's yeah. like, and this is awesome. And I've lived multiple lives at this point. I mean, I've done so many amazing things that I could never have even fathomed 15 years ago. Mm. I was directionless. I was literally just kind of going, I don't know, I'll just try this. And that's what stand-up was. It was yeah. like, mm -hmm. why don't I just go try that? And the fact that it turned into this. So I think now that I've done more than I could, could have ever imagined, it's more about like, okay, well now how are you utilizing this? And also trying to do things that, that do foster a, yeah. a little bit of a, Giving back, which also kind of sounds like, oh, I'm so humble to be giving yeah. back to the people. But no, but you, you but trying so to find you found purpose. your balance. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Is fantastic. Yeah, yeah balance. I mean, that work-life balance and balance and balance yeah. and balance is, is everything. It is an ever, a, an ever evolving, so never-ending quest. Totally. Really. And I know I'm going to be different in, in another 20 years. Yeah. I, I hope to look back on my 40s and go, oh, you were just starting to figure mm -hmm. it out. 
but at least yeah. you were trying to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because in As my 20s, president I president of I the late bloomers yeah. club. No, exactly. In your 20s, yeah, right. you think you have it all figured out. Yeah. Dude, I got this. <laughs> I got this. my way. And then all of a sudden, you're 28, you're like, holy what? crap. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I don't yeah. know shit. Yep. Stuff. Stuff. Shout Things. out to the late bloomers. <laughs> yeah. They won't let us I cuss don't. anymore, man. Oh, well, that's all right. You put a cuss word on, they say, I'm, no, you can't promote this. People so can funny. in the comments, apparently, no, but, oh, but yeah, you can't. That's but totally you can't. Fine. Interesting. That's totally fine. Yeah. That's funny, you know, because I actually, I always say, I go, I have a mouth like a truck driver when I'm not doing this kind of stuff, but I also yeah. make it a point, my, on my Twitter and Instagram, I, I don't swear. Yep. If somebody's getting a little too, you know, uh, Loquacious with their words. Yes. Uh, I'll ask them, not on my feet, because I've got kids and stuff to follow, and I can't exactly. take that. You know, yeah. It's like, yeah. but the minute the cameras are off, it's Forget just. Forget about F-bombs it. F bombs flying everywhere. I, this is not blush. <laughs> this is Raj. I didn't know those words could go together. The comedians have it all figured out, because I, I think, it, like, it, yes, if you have the, the, the utter freedom to just say whatever you want in terms of that, that kind of thing, yes, you're, you're going to be edgy, you're going to yeah. be real and gritty, mm. but working within the parameters of like having some control can really kind of force the creative process. And, yes. and I look at Brian Regan as a comedian who's got a tremendous amount of success in life, and he always works clean. Mm -hmm. And those guys can work anywhere. So yes. now you are appealing to an even broader audience at that point. How, yeah. how about that? Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah, why not? It's like, a, yeah. you know, and why show not? creators deal with this all the yes. time. It's like suddenly yeah. you, 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 you have a thesis as a graduate student, and you can say whatever you want. It's because like, it's not really, it doesn't yeah. have to go on a network with S&P standards and practices. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then mm -hmm. all of a sudden they get a show, and suddenly they've got executives in charge of production and executives and producers yep. and storyboard artists and all these people and then S&P calling them up and going, ah, you can't make that reference, can't mm. make that joke. And it's yeah. like, ah, well, how do we make the mm, joke by not really using the right, term. Right, right. Mm. So, Watch those ad libs. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I gotta ask you something, dude, because you are like one of few who have voiced a voice of Batman. Mm. Oh, geez, yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's like, that's like Nuts. a huge thing because there's not Roger, like Roger wins hundreds best of you that reaction. have done that. He wins there's best a reaction award. Real, yeah. Best reaction. You say something, he goes, Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Well, that's the inner monologue, that, the negative I know, inner monologue. But they hate everything I do. Let me throw an apple at your head. When you got the audition for this or whatever, yeah. Yeah. you probably thought exactly that. You were like, oh, whoa, okay. I yeah. think, what did you, what process did you go through to deliver something? That was not exactly like everybody else. It was kind of like your own thing. Well, I, if I, so I, whenever that's sort of presented, I'm, I'm always just kind of going, I don't know, this is where I, I will go internal and just say like, just do what you do. Mm -hmm. Just make the choice you're going to make because if I sit there and start thinking too much about what others are doing, mm -hmm. yeah. then I'm probably gonna be everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. Yeah. Um, but this is one of those situations where I, where I rely very heavily on, it's one of my frustrations with specs that are that are poorly written or not written at all. It drives me crazy. We can talk about specs yeah. next. Oh yes, because yes. I, I, lately I've been even firing off on some of this stuff. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I, I rely very heavily on a director and the, I love the, the, the collaborative creative environment of this gig. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say like, well, how did you come up with the voice of you know, Sonic or this kind of thing? I go, well, I didn't. I walked into the room and worked with a, a director and a writer and a producer and a creator and whoever was yeah. there and they tell me, we're looking to age him up, age him down, pitch him up, pitch him down, do, do something different or this character needs to be grounded or it's broadly comedic or that kind of thing. And then you just start you know, throwing your stuff out, you know, like, does he have a speech impediment? Does he have this or that kind of thing? Um, and so even with Batman, we really and truly in the, yes, there's the initial process where they say we're looking for the classic Batman. And then you just kind of go, oh, I, want, I can't do what Kevin Conroy does. I can't do what Adam West did. Uh, so you think, okay, how do I, how do I go about it? I'm just going to do what I would do. Mm -hmm. How would I feel that I'm honoring this sort of legacy of this character and being genuine in that to the best yeah. of my abilities and throw it against the wall and see so if it sticks. What is, what is your Batman Did you put on the outfit? So, I, no, I wish. Did you no. go to the Halloween you, store and put on the outfit? Until, well, here's, this until is I what, hear your Batman. This is why you see me cringe. Because I'm always like, okay, here's Chuck. Take like, away, way, Roger. I don't know. I, I love <laughs> Fred Tattashore. <laughs> to, no, oh, I, made, him, I made him hey, Jimi Hendrix. I'm I'm re that's oh, a good a, Fred Tattashore. Yeah. It's an awesome man. Hey, yeah, man. So, uh, yeah. Have okay. you heard his Jimi Hendrix? All right. It's yeah. so good. Oh, I was like, all right. Oh, wait, Jimmy. I was like, Jimi Hendrix. No, no, no. <laughs> now I'm doing like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 he does a great Jimmy. I yeah. can't do it. No, Fred and I always like that. That's an sure. excellent Fred Tattashore. Mm -hmm. We yeah. love Fred Tattashore. I love Fred. He's one of my like most he favoritest humans great on Earth. People. Yes. Such he a great people. He is guy. so yeah. great. And he's making more little baby humans, and it's awesome. I so know. So baby, cool. Hulks. Yes. 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 baby Hulks. Yes. Baby Hulks. Baby Hulks. Baby Hulks. Baby Hulks. Baby Hulks. 
Mommy! All right. I should stop. What was the question? Batman. <laughs> I, wanted hear, I wanted to hear what your oh. Batman said. Baby, like. baby Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to me! <laughs> uh, so, so for Arkham Origins, our Batman, we when I first got in the booth, we actually were working with, and, and Troy uh, Troy Baker, who did the voice of the yeah. Joker for mm-hmm. Ar- Arkham Origins, and many times since, put it best when we were doing promotions for that particular project, when he was saying, like, we, we were sort of given points on a horizon, which were the performances that both Mark and Kevin had established in those roles. Right. And we just had to kind of make sure that whatever we were doing, it would make sense that later on in the storyline that these performances would go there. Mm-hmm. Right. And, but we played around a lot when I first got in the booth for, for, uh, for Arkham Origins because we weren't sure. Do we want to have... He was a little more of an origin story, an unhinged version of Batman who was still trying to figure out how he was, what his place was in the world and relying on others and that kind of thing. So we did everything from the Christian Bale, excuse me, the Christian Bale, you have to swear to me, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We play it around with different things, but we just sort of settled on it. And it's funny because I'm at the end of the day, yeah. and usually the baritone's there. At no, the, it's there. At first it's there, buddy. The that microphone's picking but up your just, freaking chest. It was, well, and here's what's funny. This would drive you guys crazy. <laughs> I don't talk about it to this day and age, or in this day and age, but um, the, uh, the mocap team yeah. for that project wore little back, backwards baseball hats mm. with a little lav mic like this, oh, right there. here, taped right here. Here, so when it came time to record the voices for Arkham Origins, we were wearing the same apparatus, and I was thinking, but all the bottom end, it comes from your chest the and resonance, resonance yeah. and all that kind of stuff, and I thought it's missing. Like, give me a, give me a U87 or a T, at least a TLM 103 or something, you know, <laughs> and give me a large diaphragm microphone to get all that room set. And and so a lot of my performance throughout all of Arkham Origins was me holding my finger like this in front of my face. Um. It's over, Joker. You know, doing this because. The P's and the B's, for whatever reason, would plosive that stupid what? microphone. Wow. So all the, so like, the sound so would go up all, your nose and I out guess, of your eye. Tear. How? Right? I was like, legit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, poo, poo. like how is this happening? You oh, have get me. <laughs> your tear ducts are plosive. Apparently, yeah, exactly. Wow. It, yeah, so, so the whole, like, all of that was recorded like this. Yeah, kind of thing, but Another crazy. juicy layer. But of... Batman is just lower. He's brooding. To me, Bruce Wayne was a mm-hmm. troubled man who witnessed some horrific things. So, yeah. You know, Batman is Bruce Wayne, in, in my opinion. Yeah. So we just tried to, to deliver a grounded, you know. Mm. Yeah. But I always get nervous when people That's ask me to good. do their I voices. Like if anything, I'm always like, oh, no. No, but I, I love it because, like you know, it, right? when you... It's yeah, your freaking voice. Yeah. Of course it's right. <laughs> no, but, Even if you do it yeah. wrong, it's right. But when you, you know, I mean, I don't spend a lot of time reading what people say about other people because, you know, sometimes it's just... Blah. Oh, it's but, all supportive, and it's but, lovely. But it's but I it's interesting when you see you know the dialogue and and the fans and you know you definitely I mean I think your performance had such rich layers to it that oh, cool. I think that that cool. really resonated with people because you brought out the humanity of him and not just a sound alike or a voice Good. match. So definitely. Yeah. Uh, by the way, he has a. The, you can't tell him too many nice things. I know. The ego like, starts let me tell you why you're wrong. No. <laughs> come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. The O Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosbitrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.